Hey Steads. I wanted to give you a quick tour of my side yard. It's nothing spectacular, but I've only been here for about a year, and so the garden hasn't taken off completely. But there are a few things that I'm really proud of, including this pepper plant that I got at the plant exchange, and it was tiny, and now it's got a small flower. It's not doing great, I think it might need more sun. This yerba mate right here, when I got it, was about I don't know, maybe a half an inch tall, and that was only a few months ago, now it's totally flourishing. These are my poppies that have died off, but the wonderful thing about that is they leave hundreds of these long pods, and they're just amazing. They get so brittle that when you touch them, once they're ready, they just split open, and all these tiny little black seeds come out. I don't think I can show you left-handed, but yeah, inside these pods are just, you know, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of little poppies waiting to be grown. This is really interesting. I threw my old pumpkin from Halloween out here hoping that it would grow, and it did. So I didn't even know that was there, this little squash, until I pulled back some of the poppies. And um, I put in an aloe cutting that I found on the street randomly. Hopefully that roots. But this little guy is going to make me pumpkins at some point. Okay, over here we have the shaded plants. This is a geranium. I have arugula growing. There's just some volunteer clover that I haven't taken out because I like to let things grow. If they're able to, I don't see the point of pulling them. I've got some morning glories trying to come up. And then my landlord has bougainvillea growing. These are some cosmos. We have nasturtiums, and here is my little geranium cutting that's taking off. We also have the morning glory over here. This one is sending up shoots. I'm going to try to train it up the front eventually. Some marigolds scattered in there. We've got our flowers, our vegetables, our herbs. This is a French sorrel that has gone to seed. And, um, I'm excited about collecting those because there's just hundreds of thousands right now. We have some red chards, mint, oregano. This is a giant beet. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, that's a beet bottom and it's probably the size of your head. And we've just let it go to seed and this is it continuing up. It's super tall. Um, also some carrots that have gone to seed. We've got parsley here, going to seed. Also, a huge amount of mint, thyme, oregano. I think the only thing we're missing right now is basil. In the bean bed we have cosmos, fennel, squash coming up. You can see it growing out there. Marigolds with bug repellent. Here's the bottom of the celery that I planted. It's growing. We have a tomato, corn, and I'm so happy about my corn. It already has three little husks and silks. As you can see, there are so many flowers. They are so happy and thriving. Yeah. And if you look down here, you can see the first few beans coming in. Down here, this is the bottom of a cabbage that I got at the farmer's market and then I planted the base of it. You know, that part that you usually throw away, whether it's onion, celery, or cabbage, it'll regrow. You just put it in water for a few days, the roots will start to activate, and then you set it in the ground and it'll totally grow a new plant. So that's amazing. And then these little guys here, here, and then there. Those are actually fava beans that I got at the farmer's market from just mature harvested fava beans pods. And I asked a woman who was selling plants at the farmer's market whether she thought that they would grow. And she told me, no, they definitely wouldn't grow. I would need to wait for the beans to die on the plant for them to be fully um, able to germinate themselves. So they wouldn't be viable seeds having come from a ripe fruit. Apparently she was wrong because I did soak them, planted them, and they have totally taken off. So I'm really, really glad to be having these. I think it might be too late in the season for them to actually grow, but uh, here's hoping. More geraniums. There's my cat. Hi, tea tree. 
Um, here's some catnip for tea tree that she has yet to discover. And basically, these are all volunteers coming from other generations of seeds that I've collected. Everything here is free for the most part. Down here you've got a little geranium growing. And I love things that are hardy, self-sufficient. You don't really have to deal with them that much. You just plant them, water them from time to time, just so forget them. Here is my squash plant that is training up, up, up the trellis. You can see here. And it's got some flowers. It's even reaching out and trying to grab onto the Cosmo. So that's part of my garden. And I'm very excited to be producing my own food and learning about what likes to be where. And you know, there are definitely a few mistakes, trial and error. You find out that this really likes more sun than it's getting, or this should be moved because it's growing faster than you expected. But for the most part, plants are forgiving. And I mean, they grow in the wild without our help. Like mostly they just need a little care and attention. Besides that, they're happy to take care of themselves. So yes. Definitely start a garden. If you're thinking about it, you're on the fence, get it started. It's not too late, and it's a wonderful, wonderful endeavor. Thanks.